Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks so much for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I have a card to share with you. It was really easy to create. I'm using Floral Statements stamp set, which is a new stamp set in the annual catalog. I want to talk a little bit about using large stamps and whether or not to mount them onto the stickers provided. There is a backing pull away sheet and once you pull that back, you allow your cling stamp or rubber, rubber stamp clear mount to stick to an acrylic block. If you put the sticker, you will see the image. However, the sticker will keep your block and the, and the stamp from making a really good contact. It, it's never the same once you put the sticker onto the rubber stamp. There are many people that have a totally different opinion and no way is the right way except for what works best for you. I bring this up because I have been asked a number of times about how to get my stamps to stick to the acrylic blocks. So this is the way I do it and that is by not using the stickers that it comes with for the image. Also another thing to remember is to use the proper block size for your acrylic block and the stamp. If you were to use a block that is too large, then the stamped image will distort itself just a little bit. And I'm going to show you in this demonstration exactly what that's going to look like. So I'm using a brown ink that is soft suede and to do a large stamp, you need to really work hard to get all of the image covered. So this is on a block that's too big and there are some groove points on the side, but it's also very easy to rock that stamp just a little bit. And when you do that, you get the little ink spots over on the side, like in the top right hand side, and it's just, it distorts things a little bit. This is the reason that Stampin' Up! has made different size blocks for different stamps. And on the actual stamp case that they come in, they have also listed which blocks are going to give you the best stamped impression. So here is this stamp on a more appropriately sized block. And you'll see that with even pressure around the stamp, and that's around the outside of the stamp, and you can even apply some pressure down into the middle, that that is how you're going to get a great stamped impression. Plus, it doesn't hurt to leave the stamp in place for a few minutes just to make sure that all of the ink transfers when you have a stamp that has large coverage. That's going to be one way that you'll have a little bit more success and maybe a little less frustration in your card making. For coloring this beautiful image, which is this is probably my number one favorite stamp set in the new catalog, I'm going to use watercolor pencils. Since I did stamp in brown, I'm using some color tones that are going to match with brown. That's going to be Calypso Coral, and I brought in Real Red, and I believe the other one was Pumpkin Pie. I'm not really sure. But I also used some yellows along with green on the leaves, because on a rose bush, the leaves are not just one color, solid. It, when seen in the light, they're going to have many different colors. To apply the color down to the flowers, I first give it an even coverage of one base color, which was Calypso Coral, and then I will go back in and add some deeper tones into the shaded areas. This is something that is going to be melted and spread by an aqua painter or water brush, or you could even use a uh, round paintbrush that is lightly wet. As you can see, I'm not doing really anything special to get this color to melt together, but there is one method that I use that I think is worth passing along a tip, and that's that I start out wetting the watercolor pencil area 
at the lightest shade and then I pull the image back in towards where the shadows are. So another way to explain this would be that I don't want the darker ink colors that's in like the, the shaded area of the flower or the leaf to be brought out to the edge of the petal. Instead, I want those light areas to remain light. So I start with the wetting area at the light area and then I pull everything back in a, in a, in a area that is much more darker and shaded. So maybe this will help you in the next time you go to use a little bit of watercolor and see if you have a different kind of result. I'm using for the stamped image regular Whisper White cardstock and because I was very light with the water it held up nicely and I'm mounting it on a piece of soft suede cardstock and then on a piece of Calypso coral. So I have taken the colors that already exist on the card front image and made a frame of those same colors to help echo and bring the design out. It also gives it a little bit more of a coordinated look of the finished product. I'm using some iridescent sequins here and I will adhere those down with a fine tip glue pen. And for the inside of the card, I've stamped out one of the cute little flower motifs and I believe it is from Happy Birthday Gorgeous. The floral statement stamp set that I used on the front of the card doesn't come with anything but the two large stamps. Thank you all for joining me for another card tutorial. You can visit the video description by clicking show more and there are product links for you to shop and purchase supplies that are used. Also go over to my blog at jennystampsup.com and you can click on shop now to shop supplies with me. Thank you so much for choosing me as your demonstrator, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hi, my name is Trip. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.